Hello everyone, welcome to another Mix Tank Takeover with me. My name is Mark Abrams and I'm here with puremix.com. And today we're gonna to be taking a listen to a bunch of mixes from our community members on what we call Mix Tank. So if you've never seen the show before, Mix Tank can be thought of as a think tank for your mixes. And it's a place where all of the community can go and comment on your mixes and try to leave feedback. You can leave notes on things you might be struggling with, all that kind of stuff. Every other Monday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, I come on live and I review mixes on YouTube and Facebook and I don't know, where are the other ones? I think we're doing something on Twitch. So you can watch some gaming and then have me in another browser and we'll listen to some mixes together over on Twitch. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, couple couple big news items here. Um, we'll, we'll do a little bit of, little bit of housekeeping first and one of the big ones is that this Friday we have an interview coming out with David Bendith and Fab DuPont. So in that interview, Fab goes through um, a ton of amazing questions with, with uh, David Bendith. And if you're unfamiliar with David Bendith, he's done Paramore, uh, Breaking Benjamin, and about a billion others. And we had him on Pure Mix to do a song from a band called The Warning. The song's called Money, and you can watch David mix that on his SSL console with all the outboard gear in the world behind him uh, from scratch, which is pretty awesome. Another bit of news, we have a mixing contest coming up with that song, The Warning, uh, Money, and you guys are going to be able to download the stems for a chance to submit your mix and have it reviewed by Den uh, David Bendeth and be a winner of a prize package of all of David's plugins, including like a sample pack he's done with Kingsway. Um, his Slate stuff, his Slate drum library, all of the plugins that he has with Boz Digital. It's gonna be amazing. And we're gonna have a special guest on there. Two special guests. Four special guests, because we're having the entire band on as well. So the band will be able to hear some of these mixes, which is super cool. Um, that live stream will be coming up. You guys will get notifications in your email and all that if you're a Pure Mix member. Uh, also stay tuned and, and you'll see all that. So puremix.com you guys can any subscribers can participate in that mixing contest and it's going to be incredible and in the meantime you can also submit your mixes on mix tank and get feedback from the community and if it's a monday i'll review so all right we're going to jump in straight away here and i have a mix pulled up from a member who's in the chat right now this is uh aku fen and the song is called red eye if you guys are in the YouTube chat, the way I like to do this is to try and get to everybody that came and is a part of the live stream. So if you're here and you've submitted a song, please let me know in the chat your username and the name of the song, and we'll try to get to it before we get out of here today. So, all right, without further ado, let's dive in. This is Red Eye from Aku Fen, and he says in the comments, Hi, thanks for listening, and tell me what you feel. Here we go. Another 
Awesome job. I want to go back and listen to the pre-chorus, the first pre-chorus, one more time here. Stand by. Okay, cool. Um, so I think you did a great job on this mix. Um, there's a couple of things to go over, but uh, one of the things I want to like say kudos on is that the uh, the little moments that happen throughout the mix are super cool. You've got you made a um, a moment out of the tom fill toward the end, going into the last section. Um, these little like halftime pre-chorus sections are really cool. Um, I think there might be some way to enhance those, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And just overall, I think um, the balance is really cool um, as far as level and arrangement goes. And I've got one comment toward the end about that, but um, the big thing that I heard was the tono balance of it. And we'll talk about that in a second. Guys, right above me, you'll see that there's a bunch of uh, comments from the community that are rolling in. This is a, uh, a group affair, so this is your show as well, and all of your comments show up there. So if you've got some some useful tips for AkuFen, make sure you drop them up above. Or if you're on Mixed Tank, you can drop them right in the comments um, for the track. So uh, my first thing on this was um, in the pre-chorus where I just rewound to, those hits uh, going into there, I feel like there should be a dynamic lift. I get the... Um, the intention of that is to kind of like halt the listener and have this big moment where you kind of like smack the brakes before you go full drive into the chorus. And I feel like dynamically we could use a little bit more shift there. Like something needs to elevate on the pre-chorus, especially because we're doing that halftime feel where it pulls back. So um, to avoid the listener feeling like somebody just like hit the emergency brake on their car and it just like juts them forward, um, having the verse a little bit softer and then giving a little bit of a dynamic lift, like going louder on the on the first pre-chorus might help to like move that groove along. And then um, the way that you enter into the chorus is with that hard hit on four on the backbeat. And I think going into that pre-chorus, if everything cut out on four, um, the way that it does at a pre-chorus later in the song, I think that would help with the transition to the halftime feel as well. So that might be something to play with during the mix. And um, that brings up an interesting point of like, if you're the mixer, how far is it your job to start changing the arrangement? Um, a lot of times I'll do stuff like that and I'll just tell the artist like, hey, I tried something out, you know, going into the pre-chorus. We can totally go back if you want to because I'll, you know, I would have duplicated the playlist or something like that on all the tracks and could just switch it back easily. Um, but I'll tell them like, hey, I tried something out in the arrangement. If you don't dig it, we'll go back. Um, but just do something to keep the momentum going forward. And uh, that's not to go off on this too much, but um, that's something that that I learned um, from all the discussions with the Pure Mix mentors was when you're given a track, it's your job to make it just sound as amazing as you possibly can. And if, if anything bugs you like that, you know, maybe it wasn't a problem for you. For me, I would have done something about it. But um, it's your job to just make sure it's amazing when it goes out. So uh, you should always be happy with it. 
So, okay. Um, I felt like tonally it could use some sparkle on the top. It feels a little bit like it's been over smoothed. Um, as David Bendis says in this interview that's coming out on Friday, uh, it feels like you like kind of, you know, you wanted to take the elbows in on it, like you were doing a sanding job, but maybe it went a little bit too fine and it was supposed to be a little bit coarse. Um, you know, so I feel like it just needs a little bit more shine and sheen and things feel like they've just kind of been, um, super polished, almost like if you had soothe on everything and you, um, really used it to kind of round out any harsh corners or whatever, uh, or resonances. It, that's how it kind of feels to me. In the verses, the lead vocal feels a little bit def uh, diffuse to me. So like you've got micro shift or something on it. Um, I was thinking that it might be cool to go intimate on the on the verse and, and have that nice and tight and then use that stuff on the chorus again to add another lift. It's just a suggestion. Um, back to things feeling a little bit smooth. Um, it feels a little bit cloudy to me as well. So like 80 to 100 has a little bit, you know, too much info going on. And then 200 to 300 just feels like the low mids and the low end of the mix is way more prominent than the top end of it. Um, I heard some noise going in in the um, guitar going to the down pre-chorus. So coming out of the bridge, I heard just a little bit of like guitar hum. So that might be something to RX. The bridge, uh, when you go into the bridge, I feel like we lose all of those cool 80s style synths that were in there and that were really carrying the harmonic information of the song like and just kind of padding everything. When it goes to the bridge, we kind of go guitar rock and all that stuff kind of goes away. And it made me feel like, again, instead of lifting up dynamically and getting more exciting, it kind of went down a little bit, even though like the intensity is there. But it just uh, that's another arrangement thing. Um, again, like nice job on the tom fills. My only other comment was that the sax solo at the end felt a little bit buried. Um, this reminds me of a band called St. Lucia. That's uh, an awesome reference for this stuff. They have sax in some of their songs, and um, I think if you're going to have a sax, man, you got to let it go loud and proud. So, uh, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, great job, Aku. This is a super cool song. Um, let me know if you are the producer as well, because I think it was really well done. All right, let's go on to our next one and see what we got. See what we got. Uh, Paul asks, how's the Atmos conversion going? Uh, the Atmos conversion is going well. I, you guys can't really see it because it's covered in panels, but I had the room painted. We got a um, new AC unit installed in here, so I'm not burning up when I'm doing these live streams, which is awesome. And uh, the speakers show up tomorrow, and then I'm just waiting on a cable harness, and we're in. But the rack's built. Uh, the room, it feels great in here. I did some enhancements on like the on some of the treatment, like stuffing corner traps and, and all that kind of stuff. So we're getting there. More on that to come. Okay, so next track is gonna be Studio Jimon, of course. Let's do it. Okay, Studio Jimon. I'm so freaking happy you always have songs. Okay, here we go, from the top. All right, let's see, what do you have over here? Okay, I'll read this as we go and then we'll talk about it. Here we go. Mike, let me know how you did that with the birds.
Mike, you've done it again. Uh, we, uh, I don't think anybody needs Atmos. We'll just have you mix everything because that feels like Atmos already. It's crazy. Uh, I want to know how you got the height out of that field recording. It feels insane. That's super cool. Um, very cool. Okay, so I'm just looking to see. Created a field recording of Loons on the Lake and dubbed the music over it. Nice. Okay. And... Okay. Yeah, let me know uh, how you did how you did that. Yeah, this sounds incredible. I love it. Um, I have I have one comment honestly because um, the I would comment about the you know phase correlation and all that stuff, but I think it's um, it's intentional and it sounds super freaking cool and that's what it is. Like, so you know, who's to say that it has phase correlation issues? It's not going to sum the mono very well, but that doesn't really matter probably. Um, it feels immersive, just like you said in the comments. You you pointed out that you were you were going for that, and you wanted it to feel immersive. Um, you guys probably can't see it because, for some reason, I thought it would be good to put my red wall right over the comments here. Um, but uh, anyway, um, the yeah, I think that that's all great. The uh, there's some 3K that's coming out in the cricket section that was. Um, kind of like I was feeling very peaceful from the whole thing and the 3k was like aggressive and you know it kind of like pinging my ear a little bit and then there's a bird call in there that has some 3k in it as well um those two things were like they just felt a little jarring in relation to the calmness of the music and everything so that might be something to look at uh otherwise I think that's awesome the uh I agree with Tom's thing about like it might be nice if the drums weren't so spatialized and a little bit quieter, but also um, I don't think it was a mistake. I think that you made an artistic decision to do that. So my like, you know, mixed tank comment would be, yes, the drums are a little too wide and maybe a little too loud, but um, I don't think that you're uh, making mistakes over there. I think that you're doing things very intentionally, which makes it correct. Nice. You're going to do a full immersive mix. Perfect. It's going to be incredible. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. One thing with uh, with the Atmos thing, um, the uh, if you go Atmos and you start doing that stuff, it might be interesting for you to back down a little bit on the phase spread for the stereo mix and let it be a little bit more stereo if you have the Atmos available to you. Because what you do in Atmos is going to be way cooler. Um, it'd also be interesting to hear what the crash down does for, for your style of stuff. Normally, like I wouldn't say mix in Atmos from scratch, but with what you do, you're so focused on the immersive aspect of it, it might be a really interesting um, endeavor for you to just start that way in the first place. Um, whereas normally, like, the way that, that I'm going to be doing things or that I've done it with the headphones is um, I print just tons of stems, like um, Andrew and Fab and all the guys. Um, I do tons of stems from my stereo mix. So I've already mixed the song and then I bring it into Atmos and do all my atmos -y things. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what you do with that. I'm really excited for that. And uh, when you start doing the Atmos stuff, Mike, um, I hope that you put your binaural renders up here uh, so we can like all you know slap on headphones and check it out on these streams because that'll be fun. Um, you asked, uh, Mike asked, what speakers did I get for the Atmos room? So I have um, key threes in my left and right position. And uh, that was going to be cost prohibitive to go key three all the way around. Like um, I could buy a house or two. So um, I went with Focal Shape 65s for everything around me and Shape 65s for the ceiling um, because they felt like the same kind of family to me of speaker, uh, which which is cool. Obviously, like there's you know some pretty big differences, but. Um, on top of that, I got a Trinov Demon. Uh, I got the Demon 12, so I'm going to be using that to try and match things up a little bit more closely. That'll also handle all my delay calculation and all that stuff. So excited for that! And then the sub is um, I had a JBL 4312 SP from like 2010. That's like super overpowered for um, a lot of a lot of the rooms that I've had it in, and it was actually just sitting in a closet for the last 10 years. So I dug that out checked out the spec and it specs out the same as um, the Focal uh, Sub 6. It's the one that pairs with the solos and stuff. Um, so yeah, Dolby gave me the thumbs up to, to use that. So that will be my sub. All right, let's go on to the next mix. Mike, thank you very much. That was amazing. Um, oh, I have one more thing on the, the Loon. Um, the Loon? Moon Loon? Is that what it's called? 
uh, whatever the loon is in the sound um, of that, maybe try doing some things to to kill the repetitiveness of it. Like if you filter it or um, delay it, I'm sure in Atmos you're going to be moving it around and all that, but maybe even like subtle pitch shift or even doing something like wow and flutter on like, uh, you know, some kind of tape plug in or wobbly thing. Uh, just some things to, to break it up a little bit. Okay, let's see what we go next. We got a track from Gord, Stir But Not Shaken. Awesome. Here we go. Will you call me on a Saturday night so you want to paint the town? We pull up in our big rig truck and you come swinging down. I got my blue jeans on, a Stetson hat. And I just feel shirt and my boots so black We'll join the crowd dancing in the line But you point me towards that neon sign Well I'm stirred but not shaken With this turn that you've taken Every cowboy's heart is breaking Since you ain't been around You've joined the uptown youth With your craving for vermouth Well I'm stirred but not shaking I'll be picking country while you lounge around We'll be walking through a velvet door There's couches all around The lights are low, the drinks are dry There's smoother retro sound Well I hear Nancy and I hear Frank But I'm sure miss my good old Hank there's no draft here behind the bar I've handed a martini and a Cuban cigar Well, I'm stirred but not shaken With this turn that you've taken Every cowboy's heart is breaking Since you ain't been around You've joined the uptown youth With your craving for vermouth Well, I'm stirred but not shaken I'll be picking country while you lounge around While you lounge around, I'll be picking country while you lounge around. Awesome job, Gord. This is great. Uh, super fun song again. You guys, you always have like really well written stuff that you bring in on here. Uh, okay, so you worked on bringing down the brightness and less extreme panning. Also worked on the drums and added hand claps in the last chorus. Claps are a mix of real synth added for a bit of strength. I think I need to work on the art of recording, mixing hand claps, taking it's a hard thing. Uh, take a listen and let me know what works and what doesn't. Thanks. Okay, so on the hand clap thing, um, one thing I've found that works really well, first of all, the room has to be um, pretty awesome. Like recording in a small bedroom, doing hand claps, um, not that that's what you're doing, but uh, usually that doesn't end up working for me. It just ends up all being transient. Um, but... If you do have to do that, or if you have a better room, um, the mic being an omni with the player away from the microphone a little bit usually tends to work out pretty good for me. Uh, ribbons have also worked well for me, uh, and uh, I, think, I think that's about it. So ribbons would be in figure eight, but something that'll capture a little bit of the space around it, because a lot of the, um, the sound of a clap is what's happening around. And obviously, if you're really close, you're just going to get all transient. So hope that helps. Okay, um, so a couple things that I had were uh, just the overall mix compression. Just watch out for having too much of it. Um, mostly 
what I was honed in on was the vocal, and that feels a little bit over compressed to me still, um, or maybe not still, uh, but it feels a little over compressed to me. Um, and you can tell that because the first parts of the phrases are louder than the sections that he's actually singing louder. So you hear the compressor clamp down first, like the the first consonants get through the compressor, then the attack hits, and uh, it smashes down the louder note that comes after the first consonant. So that tells me that the vocal is a little over compressed. You could play with the attack times on it. I think if you speed the attack up, you're going to feel like the vocal is really over compressed. Um, so just kind of play around with that and uh, see if you can smooth out what the compressor is doing on there. The low parts where he goes into his low register and he's he's singing that main note, those have a little bit of a low end resonance. And I think it's around like 160 ish or something like that, somewhere in that, um, you know, between 80 and 200 ish thing well 80 160 kind of thing um there's a little bit of low resonance there that just kind of escapes the speakers now you're going for proximity effect and you want it to sound low and and beefy and like a red right in the ear but uh i would think about doing an automated eq move on those sections and just dip it back ever so slightly so it doesn't sound like a boom um and it actually just sounds like his his low voice on there uh the guitar on when it has the descending riff in the break between the sections, uh, that has a little bit of a low mid bump as well. So both of those sections, I would just do a little bit of automated EQ. And then I'd say, watch out for the compression. Um, there was also, it felt like a little bit of S-ing, but it was also an artifact of the compression, I think. So maybe there's some S-ing to do, but one, you know, every once in a while, there was one that would get a little zingy. Um, and then, uh, of course, check out the chat up here. They probably got some comments too. Awesome. All right. I am going to go on to the next one. Thank you for submitting, Gord. That was awesome. Next one is from Palisades, and it's called Bussin'. Here we go.
Awesome. Man, nice job. Um, it's, it's been two weeks, so I, I can't, you know, tell you I completely remember the sound of the other mix, but I remember it being a little bit more smashed, and I think that this is feeling a lot, lot better. Um, so awesome job that, you know, you've, you've done another version of it, and I love that. Um, so I was reading through your comments here, and you said that a lot of the changes were the vocals, um, and then that you tuned the master bus, which is what I'm hearing. It feels more dynamic, uh, at least from memory. And you said you're getting mixed feedback uh, on mix and arrangement from other electronic music producers. Um, and you're looking for external advice, in my opinion, regarding arrangement. So you had some questions on arrangement stuff. Um, basically, a lot of it was uh, that the suggestion was that it lacks a main bass groove and you would like input on general listenability or danceability. Guys, let them know in the chat up above. Um, how much did you dance? I, it got my strobes on, so there you go. Uh, and let's see. You're trying to narrow down in the mix and determine which elements could can be stripped away. Um, so now that I feel like I'm hearing the dynamics more, um, I'm going off of memory here, so... Um, you know, excuse me if I'm like repeating myself, but uh, the main thing for me is with those big sections where like everything's pumping, you've got the four on the floor thing. Um, I want to hear the bass doing like doing a motion with that. So doing a like, I'll, I'll voice it out. You know, like I want to feel that pulse happening in the bass as the kick's hitting it. I want to feel like side chain compressor, like just destroying it and letting it back up in a musical, you know, in a musical way. Kickstart is great for this from Nikki Romero, I think. Um, if you if you search Nikki Romero Kickstart, um, it's just uh, you know it's it's motion. You can even do it with Tremolator. If you turn the depth all the way up, you can start playing with the timing to get it to do those things. But you could also uh, do it with our compressor or any compressor with the sidechain input. If you just start playing with the attack and release times, but that's working too hard. You should just look at Kickstart or something. Um, what I'm hearing right now. It's not that you don't have any of that going on, but I'm hearing that the release, the attack and release times aren't um, timed in a in a super musical way. So I'm hearing things like kind of resonate and just linger on, which is messing up the the hard style groove of that to me, where I'm not getting this like pumping thing. Um, I'm just kind of like hearing a light version of that that kind of like rings and extends over. Um, they're common about too many bass instruments. I could see that being valid. Uh, there are, there's a lot of bass going on. There's this little spike here in this breakdown here. There's a bass instrument that happens there. And it felt like it was the same level of the basses that are in the rest of the song. So it might be something interesting to like, since the dynamics come down, if you can bring that down a little bit without losing the intention of it, um, I would try that. And um, the vocal stuff, I could definitely hear them better. I felt like the intelligibility wasn't there in all the spots. So that'll probably be a thing where you have to go one by one and just see if it's feeling right. Uh, but overall, I think it's feeling great, and I think that it's improved. Um, so great job. Yeah, awesome. I think just keep working on that groove and, and the subs. Uh, make sure that you have something really good to monitor bass off of. Uh, you need to stretch pretty far down there for this kind of music, so um, you need something that's probably reaching to at least 40 uh, to, to feel everything that's happening there. But uh, hopefully that's helpful. If you have more questions, let me know in the chat. Um, and Palisade says he has thousands of high quality hand clap samples. If you want me to share, uh, send a message. So there you go. Uh, that's for Gord. Nice. Uh, good to see Isomatic. What's up, C Rose? And I'm just looking for some more comments. Mike, that sounds awesome on your Atmos rooms with the PMCs and Gentle X. That's, that's rad. Uh, I went to Sweetwater last week um, to pick up a bunch of stuff for this whole project and um i hung out in the pmc room for a little bit and i was surprised uh those the wafer speakers that they have um that go in walls and stuff they sound incredible uh and i know um andrew sheps has that set up too it sounds great very cool all right jeff just came from nam guys how was your nam uh, i didn't go this year i was here in atmos land instead um the uh the show pictures all looked amazing and i heard that um the big highlight was kind of that everybody was back for the first time since um covid and uh 
yeah, it sounded like it was a great time. It was mostly just fun seeing pictures of all my friends together. Uh, and that made me want to be there because I miss everybody. Um, and then there was some cool, uh, some cool stuff on the floor too. It looked like, uh, if you guys went to Nam, let me know what your coolest thing was that you saw on the show floor in the chat. And also just how it was. Um, does it feel to you guys like it's back up to where it was before the pandemic? Because uh, I'm excited to see that happen. So probably, yeah, next year I'll probably go out. Uh, okay, so our next song is going to be from Tony, and it's called Take Me Away. Let's pull it up here. All right, thanks for submitting, Tony. Let's check this out. So uh, it says, this is a finished master, and it says, Hi, I recently finished producing this track. Not me singing, and it was mastered by someone else. Sometimes when I listen to it, there may be six times during the track that I cringe and wish I had taken the extra time to fix something in the mix. I'd appreciate some critical ears to listen to it and point out flaws so I can get perspective if I'm being too fussy or if others can hear the same issues I do. Thanks in advance, Tony. All right, here we go, Tony. <laughs> Awesome job, Tony. All right. Um, so I've got some some questions for you. Um, one, I'm wondering if you're mixing on headphones. Uh, let me know in the chat if you're in here still, and uh, we'll we'll go through that. Um, oh, Palisade, you had some stuff that you were you were talking about. We'll come back to it. Uh, K. Wright is in the chat, and he was freaking out on the Palisades bussin' song. Uh, that's awesome. Cool. Okay. I think I'm caught up on chat notes. Great. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let me know about the headphones. And uh, the biggest thing for me in this mix is that the vocal spread is a little too much and causing it to be diffuse. Um, the effect of that is making me feel disconnected from the vocal, and it's hard to focus on the rest of the track as a result of it. This isn't a horrible, um, a horrible, th like, you know, overall thing. And I wouldn't, um be too upset if you've already pushed this out in the world and it's released on to the next one but things to take forward is is a very useful exercise which is awesome okay so tony says he's mixing on both buyer dynamic uh 1990 dts and speakers awesome okay so um my thought was in headphones the it's really easy to overdo the spatial stuff it's hard to hear phantom center in headphones and uh on speakers it should be more noticeable um, and for this to be on your speakers, I'm wondering how they're placed. So, um, you can have, you know, things like this kind of happen if you're in a corner or if your speakers aren't, 
really on like the same plane as each other, uh, front to back of the, of the wall. Uh, you always want to fire down the long way of the room. Those are just some general tips. Um, 30 degree angle to your listening position. Uh, that was all stuff that I agonized over, over the weekend. Um, luckily my dad is a real engineer and, uh, solved the issue for me because I was going crazy. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, yeah, so with the vocal thing, it feels like if it's like micro shift or like some kind of Haas delay or something like that, um, it just kind of feels like it's spread a little too, too thin. Uh, one thing that you can do to help build from section to section of the song um, is basically, I mean, you could play with that. Like you could widen more on the chorus and then automate that back down and just have a more intimate center vocal during the verse sections. Uh, but having it throughout the whole thing just kind of makes it feel like it's floating around the song, um, but not attached to it, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's see what else we got. So um, one other comment I had was on the the tuning. So it sounds like you have auto-tune going on because I heard a little bit of the T-Pain effect. If that's intentional, auto-tune is the way to go. If it's not intentional... Um, Auto-Tune has a graphic mode, or you could use Melodyne if you don't have that version of Auto-Tune. There's like 20 versions now. Um, Melodyne, uh, I would just go through and, and tune the vocal by hand, and that would allow you to keep it from getting too robotic. Um, also, there it sounded like there were some notes that Auto-Tune was missing or not getting all, you know, the tuning wasn't fast enough to put it on the right spot, even though we heard the T-Pain thing at spots, but... Um, Anyway, I would use Melodyne. You have it. Um, you have the the basic version of it with your Pyramix account. So um, you know, click on your name in the upper right corner of the Pyramix site. Go to My Plugins and Licenses, and you can get Melodyne there. And I would try that instead of Auto Tune and just see how it works for you. Um, yeah, and then the only other thing, like for me, was. Uh, yeah, Neil says that maybe a bit less compression on the vocal would bring out the emotion of the performance more. Agree. Um, it's hard for me to hear a lot of what's going on in the mix because that vocal's so diffuse. So I think uh, I think once that would be resolved, then it would it would kind of all all improve. So Tony, if um, if you're going through this exercise, like if this song's already out in the world and you're going through this exercise just to try and improve and get better, um, I think that one like a useful thing to do would be go back to the mix strip that effect off of there or just mute the vocal do a save as of course but mute the vocal see how the rest of the mix is working for you and then turn the vocal on um, try getting rid of that effect and seeing if you can hone in on um, just first of all what a soloed vocal in the center image of your speaker sounds like make sure it's like right in the center you hear a nice tight image if you don't hear a nice tight image play with acoustic treatment, play with speaker placement, all of those things. Uh, and then turn that effect back on and listening to what you had before, see if it feels diffuse or wide to you. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. So you said, uh, the song is out and you're learning for the next song. Yeah. Awesome. And I really would consider going back to this song and just popping open the mix session if you can, and then just playing with some of that stuff because it will carry with you to the next song. Um, yeah. Cool. I hope that that helps. Moving on to the next one. Um, and I'd love to hear another version too, Tony. If, uh, if you have another version in two weeks, we'll be back. So there you go. All right. Next song is Quiet Dead of Night from Paul Martin. Let's see. All right, let's check it out. It looks like it's quiet. Let's see.
Awesome, Paul. So this uh, this is going to have vocals at some point. Um, and you had some other comments in there about um, looking at 70s reference tracks when I progress a little further with it. Um, so yeah, this is still kind of in like the, the tracking phase of things. Um, so some stuff I heard on it uh, was the snare felt like it could use a little bit more bite to me, like it could be opened up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of like low mid content going on in there, but I think if I were given this, this track, I would go bright around the snare while still trying to go for the 70 sound. I honestly, I would reach for, um, a 1073 style plugin and I would probably try a little bit of 4k, see if that worked. I would also try opening the top, which I think is 12k on a 1073, um, in at least like the UA one, I think it's 12k. Uh, and I would try opening that up a little bit before I did any cutting on this because the bottom feels pretty cool and punchy. I wouldn't want to like kill the body of it. I'd just see if there's something to pull out of it. If not, I'd do subtractive. Uh, okay. The kick drum, um, felt like it could use a little bit of low mid cleanup. Uh, 300 was a little bit boomy to me or woofy. If you pull too much of that out, you're going to totally change the year that it was recorded in. So obviously like if you go full scoop on it, it's going to get real metal and rock like, uh, and some of that puck sound sounds really good. So not too much. And maybe just try opening up the top a little bit. The, uh, drums felt like they could use a little bit of editing as well. So I think some of the timing stuff that happens could probably be smoothed out. You would have to make sure that you pull the other performances um, along or at least like edit the drums and then nudge everybody else into position or slice and chop phrases up and see if you can do that. I would try to do a little bit of pocketing on this, uh, but you're also going for a live band field too. So your mileage may vary and maybe you don't want to do too much of that. I wouldn't do a beat detective thing and just slap everything on the grid. I'm like, I would go a couple bars at a time or a bar at a time or a half bar or something, but I'd work more zoomed out than like doing beat detective and slicing every hit and smacking it to the grid. Uh, the overheads, I felt like they were spread like full left, right. And if you wanted to do like, you have the dry dead drum sound going on the toms and the snare and the kick. If you wanted to enhance some more of that seventies feel like it was in a booth or a dead room, you could try pulling those overheads in a little bit. Um, maybe try like going as far as 50% in and just see how it feels and if it adds to it it's also going to open up some space for your Wurlitzer and the guitar which um, you were really focusing on making sure that they both are coming through the mix right and that you get the balance right and all that um, so yeah those are two things i try on the bass guitar uh, i say this a lot but 800 and 1.6 are really fun areas to try boosting on a bass guitar it usually brings out some clarity 1.6 for a little bit more open top end, which I think this bass could probably use. So those are some things I would try on it. And great job. I love the song. It was great. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay. Nice. Kenneth says, Immersive is here. Amphion made uh, an active big boy. Yes, they did. I saw that. SSL System T. Um and the prism converter nice yeah man there's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff going on uh lots of ammo stock i love it let's see i think i'm going to be up and running by next monday so i'm like fingers crossed on that and then i'll tell you guys how many times i listened to rocket man over and over again uh if anybody hasn't been to an atmos room yet that's usually like the first thing that everybody plays and it's a that track is a really good introduction to Atmos because it kind of starts off in stereo and then it slowly becomes more and more immersive and all of that. So that'll be fun. Uh, Jeff says Sony's 360 at NAMM was cool. Nice. I like the idea of 360 because you get speakers below you and I'm kind of into that, but you only get them in the front and I feel like that would be cool in the back too. At least I think that that's how it works. All right. There's good comments up here from Gene and everybody else. Uh, Kenneth put on his A&R hat and says the intro might be a little too long. Uh, I think without a vocal, I can't comment on that. Okay, I'm just looking to see if anybody else submitted a mix. Guys, if you're in the chat and you submitted a mix on Mixtank, even if you've already put it in the comments, let me know so that I can hit it before we get out of here. Uh, we got time for, for a couple more here. So let me know if you got a mix up there. And if not... 
We are going to go on. Martin had the Sultan of Country in uh, quotes, in air quotes, but I don't think that that was a song. Let me just make sure. No, it was not. All right. You almost got me, Martin. Okay. I'm going to listen to this one from, uh, this is called Galatone from Luchiga. And let's see what it sounds like. Here we go. I love this. That's awesome. Um, very cool. So this is uh, this is another one. This is funny. We had two in, two in a row of these. Uh, so you say at the very top, production's not completed, but decided to start mixing. That is a very tricky thing to do. Um, it's good to like go through and you know clean up your sounds and make things sound as good as they can, uh, so you're all inspired and you have a direction and intention while you're tracking. Um, but in terms of going toward a final mix i would i would be careful about that uh because you want to make sure that you just kind of leave room for things to happen in the production stage also um you can you know uh run into a lot of latency problems that way but if that works for you that's great uh so and then the other part of it is that we don't have a main vocal yet uh so you have to retract bass maintain borello uh and vocals and track some background vocals so those are all things that you really want to leave room for. So just be careful about um, making sure that you're still going to have space for all that stuff. It's awesome to go through and like get sounds and, um, you know, you could still tweak, tweak on things. But uh, some of the elements inside of that, I think a lot of why I say this is um, that there's a lot of elements inside the mix that feel like they might be a little bit too hyped with compression and EQ. And I'd say just be careful about um, them going too far and getting unnatural. But this all sounds really great. The, the main problem for me is the bottom end 
and which is obviously one of the hardest things. There's a ton of sub info on on this right now. So I would find your your main bass instruments on there and slap a high pass filter on it and just bring it up all the way from the bottom from 20 and bring it up until you start to feel things change in a way that you don't like. Uh, as soon as you start carving out, you know, once you get into like the 30s, you're going to feel like the speakers open up, I think. Um, and you want to go until it gets to a point where you're like, I hate what this is doing. And then dial it back. Um, remember where you are and then you could do it again and just look for a sweet spot where it's like, okay, I like what happens when I lose this much sub information. Um, but any higher than this, it changes the tone of what I want. So watch out for that. Headphones are great for that. Um, the uh, Tamburello sounds amazing on this. Amazing, you know, playing on this too. You, you did such a great job on the production of this. Uh, so other than that, watch out for overall compression or limiting. Uh, make sure it's not getting too loud because there's so much cool stuff happening in here. And that's really all I got for right now. I think that things will change once you have vocals in. And I hope to hear this again as well. It would be awesome to hear it with vocals. And it's insane that you played all the stuff on this. Um, so, wait, where did you say? So, production is mine based on traditional South Italian dance. The main instruments uh, are tamborello, played by me in this case, mandolin or violin, and, of course, vocals. Yeah, very cool. Uh, production is based on field recording vocals from the 50s, and I wrote new lyrics. Awesome. You want it to sound less demo -ish. Yeah, I think just fixing up the low end is going to help a ton. Uh, oh, yeah, you wanted to have comments on the low end, so there you go. Uh, because of the bass frame drum, I used a bass drum driving the beat and the sound of the mandolin. Yeah, so just I would clean up the bottom on on all those elements and just, you know, get the subs working nice and tight. So again, thing about subs with groove as it pertains to groove. If subs are out of control, they just go on forever, right? They just ring and um, they end up having a longer note value than what you intended for them to have. So if all that stuff's just kind of ringing, you can't have a nice, like, tight groove that's going to be danceable because you got all this like stuff just kind of like bleh, 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 like kind of doing that on the bottom of the track. So watch out for that. And uh, I think it sounds great though. Really awesome. All right. If we don't have anybody else in the chat that submitted, I think we are going to call it a day. So I'll, um, let's do one more. And if I forgot anybody, let me know in the comments. Here we go. Oh, Roberto. Yeah. Awesome. Good to see you in here. Yeah, I totally recognize you. Very cool. Um, yeah. Hit me if you got any questions. Um, I think you, we've messaged each other on Instagram before. So yeah, hit me up if I can be of any more assistance. Okay. Let's see. We got all those. Let's do um, Broken from C. Donnelly. And I'll watch out for you guys in the chat in case anybody else is here that submitted. Here we go. They say you found another And you're happy now that I am not with you I cry away the
out the flowers There will come a day my life can start anew They say you found another I'm happy for you Awesome. Uh, got some noise at the end there that might be intentional. If so, cool. If not, little editing. Uh, great job. So this is from C. Donnelly. Uh, I don't think you're in here with us, but there we go. Um, okay, cool. So comments in the chat up above. Guys, let them know what you think about it. So Neil says a little harshness in the sustained notes. Bass drum is too present for Martin. I had that as well. Singer's great, but I think some more body on the voice. Yeah. Okay. So I had um, the kick drum. First of all, like I think that um, two things are happening with the the monitoring environment, probably. And this is guessing, but I think that um, I think in general, for people that are overspreading things, if they're not working in headphones, they probably have their speakers in a little bit too close, and if they want things to be wider, so. Um, if the speakers are, you know, super close like this, you're naturally going to want to pan outside of them. Uh, so make sure, you know, 30 degrees on the angle is a good starting place and then go by ear. Um, make sure you're seated back from the monitors and you got kind of the equilateral triangle going. I like to put my head inside the triangle just a little bit. So on my speakers, the, the triangle kind of meets right behind my head. Um, but my dad made a good point this weekend. He's like, well, here's to say, like, if you're not tired, you're leaning forward and all that, because I was being particular about the placement and all that. And totally true. But in general, it's, you know, best practices kind of thing. Um, so might be something to check out. So this this feels very, very spread. Also, there's some things in the balance that feel a little bit crazy. So for one, for me, the kick drum's super loud and the shaker's super loud when that comes in. Um, normally, those two elements in particular can end up jumping out of a mix when you mix really, really loud on your speakers. So uh, I'd say turn down the monitoring. Um, I go super low in here sometimes uh, when I'm working and even down to, I think, around 60s something, like high 60s, low 70s, um, usually when I'm kind of doing like automation work and balancing. So I'm usually kind of hovering somewhere around there. And that's because if I go crazy and I'm you know mixing it like, 85 to 90 or something like that like everything's loud and you don't hear the difference especially like a shaker um you would place a shaker and the second that you turn it down you're just like hey why is everything else turning down but the shaker's still there you know so it, it kind of feels weird um so that's that's just a, a thing to check out i think the kick drum's a little loud and the shaker is definitely loud um also on the vocal uh lots of mouth clicks in there i think the vocal might be over compressed as well and uh, that's bringing that's especially bringing up all the mouth click stuff. Very easy to clean up. Isotope, mouth declick, amazing default settings, hit process, doesn't destroy the vocal, takes care of all of it. Um, the next thing is on the tuning. I feel like at spots, um, it's a you know, it's still a bit out, and then at other spots it's too tuned. So again, Melodyne, um, take a natural approach to it, make sure that those transitions aren't happening too fast and then just make sure it feels good. Um, we talked about stereo widening. Overall, I felt like the mix was too compressed. Uh, that's also bringing up kind of the crazy phasiness of the stereo spreading stuff that you're doing. And uh, yeah, the um, the snare drum as well, I don't feel the transient at the beginning of it. So something to talk about with over compressing stuff, snare drum is a great way to hear that sound because you should hear a, sn a sharp like transient on it that feels good and it's punchy and when you don't um that's because the compressor is just smacking the transient down so much it doesn't really sound like a snare anymore so this snare felt a little bit flat to me um and uh just that you know you need to slow down the attack time on it especially with the kick drum being that loud it felt like it was like kick drum was here and the snare drum was back here which feels weird so uh watch out for the balance on that and the strings felt like they were lacking some body and also wrapping around my head. So because of the phasiness of them, I um, think it's losing some body on there. So I'd uh, bring down the stereo imaging stuff, the enhancement that's going on with them, and try to get some of the body back in there. I don't think it's going to crowd your vocal too much if you just bring some natural um, body back into the strings. 
the guitar was out of phase at the very end of it and its volume came up because all of the compression and limiting and stuff kind of let go on the mix. So I hope that that helps out. Again, look up at the comments because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And there we go. I think that we did it. So guys, uh, I think that does it for today. I'll be back here in two weeks at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And we'll definitely have some uh, some stories for you about this whole construction project. And looking forward to that. So cool. Make sure um, you guys, uh, if you end up doing revisions, uh, I'd love to hear them again in two weeks. So you can bring them then. And then we'll be back next Monday for another episode of the Great Big Plugin Show. Looking forward to that. If you guys have a plugin that you want to see me review for next Monday, drop it in the chat now. Uh, and yeah, let's see. I'd love to hear some some stuff. Okay, I uh, will talk to you guys next week. Thanks so much for walking or watching. All right, bye.